whole family. Yeah. Yeah. of the board that a few of the court reporters are having a hard time creating records at our meetings. So as you know, we need accurate transcripts. So I'm asking the members of this board to have some consideration by not just speaking out. Please be aware of that. I would call upon you, and I always try to acknowledge everyone. I have never not allowed any member to speak. Speaking over everyone doesn't get the point across or your questions answered. Please be as far as everyone else in this chamber, I would appreciate that everyone will follow the same suit and raise your hand. I will call on you. I will try not to be rude, however, but we need to have accurate re records. So please, one person at a time, speak. Please respect our court reporter. They are only trying to do their job. From this point on, I will be more attentive and will shut down anyone that has not been called upon. Everyone will have their chance to have their voices heard. Thank you. Okay, approval of minutes. I'll take it one at a time. Thursday, December 8th, 2022. I'll move it. Do I have a second? Second. Paul Paul? Chairman of Navarro. Yes. Mr. Vanda. Yes. Mr. Graziano. Yes. Ms. Guam. Yes. Ms. Nettleford. Yes. Mr. Venero. Yes. Mr. Zangari. Yes. 
Mr. Lyon. Peter, yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll also move Thursday, January 12th, 2023. Can I get a second? Second. Chairwoman in Alvarado. Yes. Mr. Vanda. Yes. Mr. Graziano. Yes. Ms. Guaman. Yes. Ms. Nettleford. Yes. Mr. Venero. Yes. Mr. Zangari. Yes. Mr. Vines. Yes. Also moved Thursday, February 9th, 2023. Second. Chairwoman in Alvarado. Yes. Mr. Vanda. Yes. Mr. Graziano. Take no part. Ms. Guaman. Yes. Ms. Nettleford. Yes. Mr. Venero. Yes. Mr. Zangari. Take no part. And Mr. Gaines. Yes. We'll move to our bill list. Hopefully everyone has reviewed that for March 9th, 2023. Do I have a second? Second. That was Mr. Vanda, right? Yes. Sir. Chairwoman in Alvarado. Yes. Mr. Vanda. Yes. Mr. Graziano. Yes. Ms. Guaman. Yes. Ms. Nettleford. <coughs> Take no part. Mr. Venero. Yes. Mr. Zangari. Abstain. And Mr. Gaines. Yes. Thank you. Request for adjournment for PB 2006, which is 450 452 Washington Avenue. This will be heard at our next meeting on Thursday, April 13, 2023. Thank you. Yes. Second. Chairman and Alvarado. Yes. Mr. Vanda. Yes. Mr. Graziano. Yes. Ms. Guaman. Yes. Ms. Nettleford. Yes. Mr. Venero. Yes. Mr. Zangari. Yes. And Mr. Gaines. Yes. Uh, resolutions to be memorialized. PB 2302, which is 145 North Avenue. Can I get a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Ms. Chairman Navarrado. Yes. Mr. Vanda. Yes. Mr. Graziano. Yes. Ms. Guam. Yes. Ms. Nettleford. Yes. Mr. Venero. Yes. Mr. Zangari. Yes. Mr. Gaines. Yes. Uh, let's see, we have PB 2214, which is 272, 274, and 278 Washington Avenue and 163 Valley Street. Can we get a motion in the second, please? Motion. Second. Chairwoman and Alvarado. Yes. Mr. Vanda. Yes. Mr. Graziano. Yes. Ms. Guaman. Yes. Ms. Nettleford. Yes. Mr. Venero. Yes. Mr. Zangari. Yes. Mr. Gaines. Yes. Approved. I'm sorry, I skipped uh, PB 2304. Mm -hmm. 254 and 256 Washington Avenue, and 258 and 260 Washington Avenue. Can we get a second and a motion? Motion. Second. Chairwoman and Alvarado. Yes. Mr. Vanda. Yes. Mr. Graziano. Yes. Ms. Guaman. Yes. Ms. Nettleford. Yes. Ms. Veneer. Mr. Veneer. Yes. Mr. Van Gary. Yes. And Mr. Gaines. Yes. Okay, approved. Okay, our new business, PB 2306, semicolon 81, Stephen Street. Witness. Hi. Hi. Yeah, well, you're testifying on the. Is it on? Just on. Oh, just the little button, the little switch. No. No, off. By your left hand. Right. Yeah, <laughs> 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 you swear to testify you shall give tonight be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Please give us your name and, and tell us your, your business address for the for CME. Sure. Uh, name Madhika Apte, spelled uh, A P T E. Business address 14609 South Howell, New Jersey. Um, I am a licensed uh, professional planner in the state of New Jersey. Tell us what you're here for.
Sure. Um, so very briefly, um, what you have before you is basically the plan that has been adopted uh, by the council and has been before the board. Uh, the only thing that's changing right now is apparently there were some erroneous dates. Um, so it's almost an administrative um, change that's happening to the cover page. We want to make sure that our, all our I's are dotted and T's are crossed. There's nothing substantial changing in the plan. It is still consistent with the Belleville Master Plan um, and, uh, um, uh, and still consistent with the state and the county plan. So that's about it. So the plan, the only There's thing nothing. is just the administrative? Yeah, just the cover page is changing. <laughs> okay. So this, as you can see from the memo that was submitted, this board uh, voted on this previously. So there's no, no difference except for the dates. I did speak with Mr. Don Pelley right. about it beforehand. So uh, we should, oh, sorry about that. i got to get used to this. Um, so. It's the same application, it's just administratively needs to be changed for the dates. Um, I don't know whether the board has any questions for the witness, but you could certainly, now would be the time to ask. But otherwise, it's already apparently what this board has already approved. Does anyone have any questions? No. So, that, so there's no, there's no um, zoning changes or bulk standard changes happening, it's literally just the cleanup, correct? Yes, that's Of the dates. And Everything else is things. Everything else. I mean, I know it's been your tradition to leave it open. So. Okay. Um, if it's seen done with the board, if the public has any questions, Mr. Sheldon, please come forward and get more in. of the fact that the way we do things here usually end up both asking questions and then maybe giving your opinion. Let's just swear you in so we don't have to worry about it. You swear the testimony I shall give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing. I do. All right, please give us your name and address. Michael please. Sheldon, 47 Flood Street. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, first, a bit of clarification. I said a few moments ago that uh, essentially all that is changing with this new consistency plan is the date. But I did a comparison. Correct me if I'm wrong, the last consistency plan was heard by this board in November of 2020. It was back in the dark days of COVID with Zoom, etc. But unless something happened along the way that escaped my attention, the first consistency plan, which was produced by CMA, was heard by this board in November of 2020. That's what I understand right, right. too. All right, so what I then did since I, I know a little bit more about computers than how to turn on, turn them on and off, um, I used Adobe Acrobat to compare both files. And there are many changes between the first version and the version in front of you. I uh, wish I uh, had sent the list of changes to you ahead of time, but let me just give you some of the highlights. In the, uh, the new plan on page 12, the, uh, um, this is section C, article 5, the maximum building height is being changed. Previously it was 30 feet, now it's 32 feet. Maybe somewhat de minimis, but it is a height increase from 30 to 32. Uh, signage. Uh, this is under section L. Uh, it now says that the uh, maximum sign area shall be 60 square feet per sign. Previously, what it said was that the total amount of signage would be 60 square feet. So now you're allowing multiple signs as long as each sign is no more than 60 square feet. Previously, the total, the way it was worded, was 60 feet altogether. So there's a second uh, significant change. Hours of operation, this is under section N. The, uh, the new hours of operation, and unfortunately, my printout got clipped. But the way it is worded, it says that the, the convenience store and service station, I wish I had a printout of this in front of me, because part of my of it got, got clipped. 
the convenience store and service station, they operate between the hours, and I think what it says, and though it's missing on my printout, between the hours of, of, of 1 a.m. and 6 a.m. If any of you have, have it in front of you, you could just read it for the record so everyone is on the same page. This is section 10. It's 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. Five, right. All right, so it's 5 a.m. to 1 a.m., but isn't that opposite of what it should read? It should be from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. If you say from 5 a.m., which would be the start time, to 1 a.m., what you're effectively saying is that th that period begins at 5 a.m. and ends at 1 a.m. When I think you, you're allowing overnight usage now, it says that as long as the surveillance is accessible by the Belleville police, but shouldn't that mean that the overnight part of the overnight usage of the store would be from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. rather than from 5 a.m. to 1 a.m. It just seems it's, it's kind of, my opinion, the reverse of what it should be. But it's something for you to discuss and make sure that you, you're all in agreement that there's no legal technicality there, that the hours of operation overnight are opposite to what they should be, 1 a.m. to 5. I think it says from 5 to 1. Uh, the uh, Previously, with the study that was heard before this board in November of 2020, there was a, a, a large passage here which required that if the store, if the convenience store was going to stay open 24 hours, that the proprietor of the convenience store had to uh, provide fund on their own, their own overnight security, as well as providing uh, a video uh, feed to the Belleville Police Department. Now that requirement that the proprietor of the quick check or whatever this is going to be, provide their own security, that's been been deleted. So it seems that this is a concession to quick check or whoever may be running that store. Uh, on, under section O, other standards. Previously it said that uh, any oil tanks, underground oil tanks, had to be uh, at least 10 feet away from any property lines. Now that's been reduced to just 5 feet. Right. Again, it might sound de minimis, but you know, what is the why? Why that concession? Is there something you know behind the scenes that none of us are privy to that's requiring them to get that extra five feet of offset? Uh, the one change here that I actually was astonished to see uh, and actually approved is the parking matter. Previously, uh, this is under on page 17. The uh, previous parking requirement. It just simply said one space per unit, but now, and kudo, you know, I'll give credit where credit is due. I'm usually at, at odds with Mr. Banda and other members of the board, but now the new parking seems to be much more appropriate and fitting for the overall needs of our township. It says the minimum for one bedroom unit is one parking, one space per unit. The minimum for a two bedroom unit is two spaces per unit, and you're also requiring visitor parking. It says a minimum of visitor space is one space for every 10 dwelling units. Now that's something new, and I approve of this, but this was not in the original consistency study. Let me see this. And then finally, there is, uh, no, there are actually two more things here. Uh, section I. Excuse me. Yes. Are there two more? Because I yes. don't want to forget what she's going to do. All right. Oh, well, she wants to start. All right. But Should I pause here for a moment and let you catch up? Or? You want to hear the other two? Yeah. I'll, I'll finish up, right? Yeah. Um, under Section I, Mechanical Equipment and Utility Standards, now um, this new consistency plan is allowing for garbage chutes to be uh, created on each floor with the collection in the, on the bottom floor, obviously. Uh, the previous plan did not allow for any garbage chutes to be present inside the building. And there's been some concern expressed by this board in previous applications that you did not like the idea of any sort of trash facilities inside of a building because ultimately things get dirty, there are spills, and then you start to have infestation problems with cockroaches, rats, etc. Uh, and let's see, I think the last part of this is um, actually an improvement, in my opinion, under the, the exact section here, uh, on page 23. Uh, it appears that whoever's going to redevelop this site is going to be tasked with making general uh, traffic improvements. It talks about 
uh, the, the redeveloper putting in signalization, resurfacing, widening uh, intersections, uh, produce, uh, having a left turn only uh, uh, exit point. Not, it doesn't say exactly where, whether this is going to be on the Rucker Street side or the Academy Street side or other quarter. But you are uh, requiring, and again, kudos, I, I appreciate this expansion, you are requiring the redeveloper to uh, make other changes around this block to improve traffic flow. So again, thank you for, for requiring this much. I just hope this part of it is realized when the council finally uh, allows this project to go forward. So I think that is, that is essentially the, the main, there's some other minor issues that I didn't think were necessary to bring before the board. Um, just some things about uh, the types of products that could be used for the, the, to finish the facade. I didn't think that was very significant. I didn't bother to print them here, but those are my the points that I wanted to bring to your attention. So again, for um, you to believe that all that has changed between November 2020 and tonight is a date on the cover page doesn't seem to be correct. Well, I, I think it's due diligence of each board member to compare and do their job. Um, so again, I wish I had I had shared with you. The, the output. Uh, I know Ms. Nettleford, I only recently discovered you're an alum of Stevens. It's nice to have an alum this year, uh, as I'm also a graduate of Stevens. Um, but but you know, she obviously has computer skills. She has her degree in computer science. So I'm sure she could have done this, if she didn't already, could have done this very simply. But uh, to save the rest of you in trouble, I wish I had sent Well, that's all right, because I'm sure each member is prepared before they get to this yeah. point. But if, you, if you are still interested, I'll send you the comparison later. Not even though you're going to, I'm sure, going to be voting to approve this and recommend it to the, the council. Council will hopefully have a separate hearing on this matter, and then maybe I will, even though probably will be sent to the trash can upon receipt. But I'll go ahead anyway and send send it to the members of the council. Okay. So. All right. Well, all right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so the items that were brought up just now, I believe these were items that were discussed at the last meeting uh, on uh, November 19th, 2020. In fact, these were the recommendations of these board when that redevelopment plan was being heard. These recommendations from the planning board went to the council. The council agreed to add them to the plan, which is how they typically things happen. And that's when the redevelopment plan was adopted. So all these that were mentioned just now about maximum building height of the commercial district, um, as well as the wall signage, one other item was the fencing. The rear yard fencing was uh, made to be uh, six feet tall, except where you know further screening is required for trash enclosures. Um, other changes, uh, such as changes in hours of operation, off-track improvements, as well as um, you know, residential parking requirements were all the requirement or were all the recommendations from this board to the council during the 2020 consistency review, and that's what went to the council. They agreed to incorporate that. The redevelopment plan, the new plan, incorporates that. So the the answer is basically from your 2020 uh, you know review and consistency, nothing has changed. That's what. It, has happened. Right now it's just the cover page that has changed. Okay. Thank you. Mr. I, would, I would just like to restate it that the facility will be closed from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m.? Yes. So uh, I believe, again, the recommendation of this board was that we want to make sure that uh, facility is closed from, um, um, I'm trying to pull the exact notes up here. So it, it said the convenience uh, store uh, and service station may operate between the hours of uh, uh, 5 a.m. to, I believe, 1 a.m. And then it's supposed to remain closed from 1 a.m. to 5 um, a.m. And good. I think that's Thank what the redevelopment plan is doing. Thank you. So, so basically it seems that they, he got a report, right? And then we discussed that report at that last meeting. And then the reason there's a difference is because conversation that we had was later edited into the current report. 
Exactly. So right. what happens is when the redevelopment plan as is gets presented, the board not only reviews it for consistency, they, they can also make their recommendations, which is what all these recommendations were. Which is what then we it were. goes to the council, and the council you know, may agree or not agree to incorporate, but in your case, it did agree to incorporate, and that's what got incorporated and adopted. However, uh, erroneously it was found that there were some date changes which were you know, in the resolution not correctly adopted, and that's why this exercise is happening. Mr. Prant-Antoni, please uh, get some more in. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Prant-Antoni, 129 Mount Prospect Avenue. Please, raise, please raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony you shall give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Uh, this is another example where the, you know, it said there was no changes here, just administrative. But there were changes, as Mr. Shelton uh, presented and all that. So I think we're, we should be open to the public, the few of us that are here, about what they were. It wasn't just administrative. There were other changes there. Uh, the other thing, I, the young lady, I think, accepted that since all these things were in from 2020, I don't believe the residential portion of this project was in the plan in 2020. That was added on recently. That within... was the whole discussion on the November meeting. We had a big discussion. That's one of the big things I remember, especially the parking, right, guys? That, that was, that was, that was. A, I'm not sure if that's what the meeting was about, adding that piece. Maybe it was, because that seemed to be the major. Topic. Yeah, I remember a lot of discussion about the residential. Yes, but it wasn't in the 2020 plan. The 2020 was just quick check back then. The residential just came about in the last six months or a year. It was definitely not no, that in was that 2020. Night. I have all the agendas and uh, all my notes, and I've been to all these meetings. Just so, one second. Mr. Mr. Wanted to say you are correct. The initial meeting was just about quick check. Then, during our other meeting, it was rezoned to the residential part in the back that we had a separate meeting about. And now this is just all of them built in together. We did have a, a separate meeting about the quick check being split and residential being allowed in the back. So, but well after 2020. No. no. It was not no. in the 2020 plan. That was the 2020 meeting, correct? It, as I remember, before Mr. Sheldon, I mean, before Mr. Melvin became mayor, we had a plan for just a quick check. Once he became mayor, he thought the, the site was underutilized and he wanted to add housing. So maybe there was an original plan, but going back to, I think, 2020, it did include uh, residential. But originally, there was no residential. Mayor Melham wanted residential added, and I remember us adding it to it. Well, I, I save, my wife don't like that, I save all these maps, I put all my notes, and it wasn't uh, back there. Uh, and the reason I object to the residential plan, the 540, uh, 445, I left. 16 Rucker Street, a customer of mine. It is worse. I've worked for him for 40 years and his mother. You cannot get out of the driveway out there. After I start looking at my clock, eight and a half minutes to back out of there. It's a steady flow, and you see up the Belleville Turnpike, it's just as if from four to about seven, you cannot move. And it's the opposite way in the morning. But nobody can get out of of that driveway. It's going to be worse because last week they started construction on the 18 units and three stores on that empty lot and they put up, you see they put up the construction fence and now you can't even see and once that 36 foot wall of those apartments are going up, so you've got to take a look at what you're doing here. You know, it, it's, we have gridlock in this town. I tuned into a Montclair meeting about two months ago and they're up in arms over here because the old Lackawanna, that builder wants to build 580 units and people say, you can't move in Montclair now. Can we stay so, in this project? Yeah, well this is, what's on there? This is part of that plan. And Montclair? this one, yes. Montclair. And I've told the mayor publicly, 
Montclair and Bloomfield, their development is affecting us because they brag that the people are coming from New York and you can see the lights and plates. But how do they get here? There's no way to get there unless you come to Belt Turnpike. This bridge or two and a half miles to the Park Avenue. So we're getting all that traffic from all these people going over there. My two sons live in Bloomfield. The taxes are through the roof with all this, quote, development that's going to give you new taxes. You know, it, it's crazy. But you're going to have to look at this residential. We have too much. We got 38,000 people jammed into two square miles. We're three square miles, but over one square mile is the golf course and open space of the park. So the, 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 the highest density town, I think, in New Jersey. I read in one of the state controllers' uh, reports one there. So please, this residential, you've got to put the brakes on it, folks. It's killing, and none of them have even been ready yet. I think you got like 1,200 units approved. None of them didn't rent it. Wait till they start renting. And then we're going to look back and say, that's the voter for it. Thank you. I got a question for Mr. Harris. Has there been any uh, progress with the main and Rucker Street? You said maybe they would do away with that. No, there, there's, there has been progress. I think uh, they, 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 they signed an agreement. They, they entered into an agreement with the DOT, and the DOT is looking into it. And uh, I think the town, through the developer, uh, ponied up their portion of the improvements to that traffic light. So, I mean, that would help, right? So, Rutgers and Maine would be able you, to you, make... You don't have to go up uh, Academy and uh, down Stevens. Uh, that should help traffic tremendously. Yeah, you'd, yeah. Be able to make, you'd be able to... If you're going south on Main Street, you'd be able to make a left turn. Like, like, like the Turnpike Bridge, right? They're not in the same way. It'd be left. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Please raise your right hand. You swear a testimony shall give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Give us your name and address for the record. Hector Mafucci, M-A-F-F-U-C-C-R, 61 Continental Airport. I just had one comment. In my opinion, it's an oversight. You have a trash chute, there should be a recycling chute also. Excuse me? There should be a recycled chute also, which is not what the point. So I don't think there's anything inconsistent with what... Can I just have a couple oh. of concerns? Oh, I'm sorry. For the record, my name is Dean Donatelli. I'm the redevelopment counsel for the, for the township. Thank you. So I don't think there's anything inconsistent with between with um, between what Ms. Apley said and what Mr. Shelton said. The, and Ms. Apley explained it perfectly, and I think this board knows governing body introduces a um, redevelopment plan that comes to this board for consistency review and then goes back to the redevelopment, uh, the, count, the council for adoption. That happened here, and to Mr. Banda's point, I'm not sure, and this is one of the reasons why the administration wants to clarify the record. I'm not really sure what exactly happened, although uh, I was the redevelopment council. I did not partake in, in that process, but as Ms. Apti said, in roughly November of 2020, there was a series of recommendations made by CME um, that were recommended by this board to the council, and the council then incorporated them into the redevelopment plan that was ultimately adopted. So I believe what happened was the plan that, I don't know what, exactly what Mr. Sheldon was looking at, but I believe what he was looking at was the plan he referred to as the consistency review plan, which is an accurate comment, but ultimately that was a part of the redevelopment process is to incorporate this board's comments into the plan that's ultimately adopted. Um, so I just want to clarify that. And, and it was very clear when I went back to look at it, it's very clear that there was a resolution authorizing, the, directing the study of the property. It's very clear that 
there was a declaration of area need of redevelopment for this property. And uh, um, as was mentioned earlier, it originally was a, a quick check for the entire property. And then, as Mr. Vignero said, it was kind of morphed into a uh, mixed-use uh, mixed residential on a portion. And, and what we all know now is going to be a, a application for a quick check, which is no secret. <clears throat> so I just, I just wanted to say that. But to the, to the chair, I want this part, to Patty's part, um, there's no, the, the role here is still uh, one of consistency review. So Ray brought up a good point. We need to fix typo. And thank you, Mr. Sheldon, for pointing it out. Clearly needs to be reversed. And um, if, there, if there's any other comments, we didn't really want to open it up because it had gone through the process already. But there's nothing preventing uh, this board from making uh, recommendations to the council. And then uh, and the council can take it at their leisure as to whether to incorporate those comments or not. They seem to make sense to me. I just want to add that comment. Right. So, I mean, you, some of you know better than I do because you were here back in 2020 and I was not. But it seems to me that when the planner was saying this plan is, is consistent with the plan that was previously approved, she's referring to the plan that was ultimately approved by the mayor and council probably in 2021, early 2021. So there, the only change between that plan and this one is the dates. Um, that what we do at this point is you would be authorizing me to send a letter to the mayor and council advising them that, uh, that you uh, agree that this is consistent with the master plan. We've done these letters already since I've been here on a number of occasions, but we have the opportunity to add any recommendations. If anybody has any recommendations, we can add them in now. I know we just heard one about the, the recycling chute. So if anybody has any one that they want to specifically include, now would be the time to let me know. Well, I think the only two recommendations is the timing and uh, the recycle. Right, so the timing is more of a typo, it sounds like, so that you're going to correct that typo before it goes. I could put it into the letter as well that we want the typo corrected. Um, and what was the second one? Uh, recommendation of a recycling bin as well. Yeah, shoot, shoot, shoot. recycling chute. Does, does everybody agree that they want that included? Anybody have a reason not to include it? Okay. And for the record, I assume that would only be for the mm -hmm. residential. No, we want quick check. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. the roof. For, the, for the residential, yes, of course. So we would put we could put that in the letter as well. So um, other than that, Madam Chairwoman, you basically just need. I think we've had. Uh, you can close the public portion because everybody's had a chance to speak. And then, if you're okay with it, you can take a uh, a vote on whether or not you're okay with me writing that letter to the mayor and council with the changes that we've talked about. I'm going to close the uh, public portion. Everyone spoke. Any other questions, or comments? We're going to make the recommendation as far as those two corrections. Have our attorney handle that. And right. Does anybody object? Anyone have an objection to that? Okay. Okay. I mean, it's better to do it okay. since you're here anyway. Yes. So yeah, can I get a motion? Make a motion. Thank you. Chairman Alvarado. Yes, Mr. Banda. Yes. Mr. Rosiano. Yes. Ms. Blomman. Yes. Ms. Nettleford. Yes. Mr. Nero. Yes. Mr. Zangari. Yes. And Mr. Donnelly. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. That concludes that one. Then we'll go up to PB 2308. It's an ordinance amending Chapter 23 zoning definitions. And please ignore some of the uh, horrible time. <laughs> <laughs> many, many errors as far as the title is concerned. That will be corrected before it's put into the book, I hope. Yes, I so, hope so too. Sure. So, like every other uh, ordinance related to zoning, the ordinance gets introduced by the mayor and council. It gets sent to the planning board for its review. And the, the planning board has to opine back to the mayor and council on their opinion on the zoning ordinance. So, uh, as you saw, this looks, I, I, I have to say, I did not have an opportunity to compare this to what's currently in there for definitions. But this is a, uh, 
a standard provision that would be at the beginning of your zoning plan so that certain types of uses are defined. Um, uh, I don't know, were you, were you involved in the, uh, Ms. Appy, were you involved in the, you were not? No, okay, no, this okay. Was this was internal? Okay, all right, so, did you type this? No, this was <laughs> town attorney did. No, we don't have, we don't put anybody on the spot. <laughs> this is a little bit of uh, no, I'm just teasing. Please, so, one. So the, this is just this is just regarding a, a definitional change to the ordinance so that these items are either uh, redefined or defined for the first time. So if you if you'd like me to clarify it, it has to do with um, specifying some business uses that were not clear previously, and then there's also some of their own problems with like smoke and vape shops that we had some conversation about, and clarifying the definitions that are associated with that. So that's really what this whole thing is, just a little bit of cleanup and helping the zoning officer uh, uh, do his job. And, and um, if anybody has any questions, we can discuss it. If you'd like to know more, we can know more, but it's pretty, pretty straightforward. It's, it's a, it directly has to do with businesses and definitions associated with them. Consignment shop and pawn shop. I would think that the consignment shop would be more of a pawn shop because you're dealing with metals, gems. Very similar, dealing with any type of confusion that something, because people, it's funny, and it's something that me and Cindy learn the role all the time. You know, people come in and they try to skirt around what's not allowed by saying it's something different. So all we're doing is being very specific about these, each of these types of things so that there's nothing that has, nothing can get really around this. So you want to talk about, say, a dance facility versus a dance studio. Right. Dance facility can easily be misconstrued as a club. Right. So we want to open up a club next to a We don't. So what we're okay with dance studios in terms of your learning dance, dance schools, things like that. So we're clarifying really what we meant to be allowed, what should be allowed, and what shouldn't be allowed, and putting definitions to associate with them. And if I may, yes, uh, after well, all of these changes, and not only these, but the ones that are current, they all need ultimately to be policed, right? Because there are fine lines. Right. So it, it's just it's just like a meter. It's just like a whatever. They need to be policed. So we can get as strict as we want to get, but then they have to be enforced. Who would be the ones enforcing this? Again, if there is, I don't know the process. I think it would be you, Mr. De Laurentiis. Yeah, That was my only question about the pawn shop with the signing shop, because in my mind, the signing shop would be closed, the pawn shop would be here, and kind of more of a retail, and it was kind of... And, and let me let me use my words a little bit when I say police, would go to Mr. DiLorenzo, and he would know where to send it if needed to be. I don't want to say police as in police officers, I want to say in the process that it would go to Mr. DiLorenzo, and he would point it to the areas that need to enforce that Correct. Correct. Okay. Mr. Veneer. I had a, a question I was speaking to uh, Mr. Bander before about is the smoke shops. And how do we enforce that someone legally opens a smoke shop and are now not selling or distributing marijuana? And who's... Uh, we can tell the police that they were distributing marijuana. And we can tell them it's not it's prohibited to do that too. So. But to clarify on that one, we strictly prohibited smoke and vape shops. Right. And then we separated them from cigar shops to make sure that there's a clear definition, clear difference. So when somebody does come in, they don't say it's this or it's that. They're very specific, and then that gives, whether it be zoning, more teeth and shutting them down, wherever it might be. Or, or at the other end, I, I don't know if it was at health or the police that would come in if they were, they were selling something illegally for the Which smoke shops that are open. Thank you. Okay. Is there any 
if I may, I, I like where Mr. Pinero was going with this. Is there any teeth that says smoke shop cannot have cannabis? Like sit down cannabis. Is there anything detailed like that? That's really, it's related to tobacco products, really. Um, so it doesn't anywhere mention in this definition cannabis. In, in the BA district, anything cannabis related is banned. Prohibited. Prohibited. So that would be one way of doing it. Um, and other than that, it, it, it seems even in other municipalities in New York City, they came out, they had a big press conference. It was getting out of hand the amount of smoke shops that were opening once the state legalized marijuana. And they were having a problem policing it. So instead of letting it get that far, just cut it off where it's at. Any other comments? Comments? I'll open it up to the public. Does the public have any questions, comments? No? Very good. And I'm going to close this portion. And uh, can I get a motion? Make a motion. Second. Roll call. Carrie Green Alvarado. Yes. Mr. Vanda. Yes. Mr. Ravian. Yes. Mr. Street. Here. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mr. Vanda. Yes. Mr. Van Barry. Yes. Mr. Garcia. Yes. Mr. Garcia. Yes. yes. Applications before the board, there are none, and uh, can I get an adjournment? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Chairman Yes. Mr. Vanda. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. 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 Yes. 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 Mr. 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 Yes.